So once upon a time, there was a man named Steven. And Steven really hates red light cameras. So he kept going to his garage and finding a long pole. And he purposely pushed the cameras so they were no longer pointed where they were supposed to be, rendered them useless. He called himself the red light camera Robin Hood. Stephen even told National Public Radio that the cops had confiscated his painter's extension rod as evidence. The story is a little less cute once he started cutting wires. Police call it felony criminal mischief. But it's not just people on the fringe like Stephen who've turned sour on these. Los Angeles. Los Angeles. Los Angeles. This is Laurel Canyon and Victory Boulevard, and I'm here not because there's something interesting to show you, rather it's the lack of anything interesting. This replaced piece of concrete right here is where there used to be a red light camera. One among a hundred spread across 36 stoplights that are now all gone, legally gone. Let it die. Enough already. Let's go ahead and just take a vote on it. 13 eyes. Okay. Why did the city of Los Angeles get rid of all of theirs? It was really a shock. I mean, they really did not expect this to happen. The L.A. City Council voted unanimously to turn off the cameras. I mean, it was a national story. I mean, I was on the CBS Evening News. Jay Bieber might be California's fiercest red light camera opponent. The public was blaming the police for it, and really it's the politicians' fault. Instead of taking a Bart Simpson approach with paint rollers and petty vandalism, Jay is more like Lisa, using math, science, and old-fashioned political persuasion. There were about a hundred and nine cities that were running programs. Now I think there's about 29 or 30. This all starts in 1965 when a company that makes swimming timers in the Netherlands claims the invention of the first red light camera. During the 1970s, cameras made their way into Australia, Britain, Hong Kong, South Africa, and Taiwan. In 1982, a New Yorker ran a red light and his car snatched one-year-old Jocelyn right from her mother's arms, dragging her stroller 13 blocks before the car finally let go. Miraculously, the baby would survive this, but this story brought camera enforcement to Manhattan. A lot of people out there who believe that that is a way to stop catastrophic collisions. You know, they're well-intentioned. They think that if we just simply ticket enough people, we're going to get them to stop this really terrible behavior. Cities were willing to try, but the problem is city budgets are tight and the cameras are quite expensive. Cities across California want to save lives, so these growing red light camera companies would approach police departments and city engineers and say, hey, we've got a way for you to do that. 102.7 KISS FM, Freeway Update. Good morning on the one. So about 20 years ago, Los Angeles signed its deal with Lockheed. Yes, the airplane company. Rather than L.A. paying for all the equipment and installation up front, the company would take a cut from each ticket. Here's how it breaks down. The state legally sets the ticket price, $271 at the time, with California keeping half, another 60 bucks to Lockheed to pay for the cameras, and the city gets the rest. This is called a revenue sharing agreement. Since the city is paying as they go, one red light runner at a time. When cities don't have to come up with millions of dollars up front, a revenue sharing contract makes a red light camera system really accessible to pretty much any city. And city councils would eagerly vote yes. Revenue sharing helped camera programs explode from coast to coast, from a few dozen cities to over 500. But revenue sharing comes with a big paradox. Cameras that work, well, they also stop generating revenue. Money needed for that camera to keep existing there. Look at all these people running red lights. You all right? Let's put in a camera and ticket time! Revenue sharing means some of that money is paying off the camera. But let's say it works perfectly and nobody runs a red light ever again. Well, the money dries up and there's no way to pay off that camera. But one that doesn't really reduce red light running can keep printing tickets forever. You know what this reminds me of? Online dating. Bear with me. I pay them monthly so they can solve my problem. I want to meet a girl and pair off. If I don't believe their service works, I'm not going to pay them anything. But if I do believe it works, and it does, well, I'm also going to stop paying them. Now, what they need is for me to believe in it and go on lots of dates, but never actually pair off, never solve the underlying problem. 
That way, I keep paying them forever. This sort of scenario may have been happening in Menlo Park. California has open records laws. It let Jay get a hold of an email where the sergeant running the red light camera program wanted to know what happens when people stop running red lights because of the cameras. Well, a rep from the company wrote her back to say, it's normal in the first few months for high numbers and then it will begin to decline and stabilize. Where it stops is anyone's guess. I can say at intersections that have right turns enforced, those continue to produce consistent numbers. Consistent numbers? Like, I thought the goal was to have zero as the number. Jay tells me he believes red light camera companies and cities that operate them may be too good at targeting the wrong kind of violation. We tend to think of it all as one thing, as red light running, but we even break it down into three main categories, which is straight through red light running. That's, you know, when you're, you're going straight through the intersection. The really dangerous kind that red light cameras are designed to prevent cars charging straight ahead at full speed, causing potentially deadly T-bone crashes. There's red, red light running that has to do with making a left turn. When there's no green arrow, we have to judge an acceptable gap. As the light turns red, the oncoming cars should be stopping. Leave this judgment up to we humans, and sometimes we're gonna end up running the red light. Like driving straight, the wide sweeping left hand turn means you really don't have to slow down all that much. Combine that with traffic charging ahead full speed, and we've got another T bone crash. But the third type is different. There's red light running that has to do with making a right turn. Right turns don't cause T bones, they cause side swipes. And the tight corner means we have to slow way down below 15 miles per hour. Perhaps that's why we're kind of careless with them. Right turning on red is legal in most places in the United States after a full stop. Only problem is, sometimes we get a little sloppy about that full stop part. Combine the something we all do wrong with the camera that's always paying attention, and you have a recipe for the public turning sour on automated enforcement. The Los Angeles Times sifted through a mountain of ticket data and they found in Southern California, 80% of the tickets went to people rolling right-hand turns on red. That means the T-bone crash red light running only gets 20% of the tickets or less. Everybody loves the idea, oh, we can stop all those, those horrible red light runners and everybody's in favor. And then they realize that they're the ones getting the tickets for some slow rolling right turn at two o'clock in the morning and getting a $500 ticket. And then this town somehow managed to make the situation even worse. Reading's number one hit music station. Power 94.7. I do think it's a little bit fitting that I'm talking about red light cameras in Reading. But at this corner here, one of the most dangerous intersections in town, the city put in a red light camera and somebody got a ticket making a right hand turn. He got video and everything. Rolling right through. So we asked for advice on the internet and people, you know, it's the internet. Oh, you are a monster. What a dangerous habit. Well, it is. Oh, you should stand in front of my car. And let me roll 10 miles an hour into you. A little bit mean. <laughs> But there's something about this corner I want to show you. The city actually paints a white line on the right turn here because there are so many cars making the turn to enter the freeway. They want to keep drivers moving. They even took the crosswalk away on this side just to get rid of that extra conflict. So if the message the intersection is telling you is keep moving, but then they put in cameras to say, no, 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 don't keep moving. What message is the intersection conveying to the driver? The camera even enforces during this green arrow. The crosswalk is stopped. There's literally nothing or no one to hit. As a driver, you intuitively feel how low risk the situation is, so you're more likely to roll the right turn. It almost sounds like they're baiting a fish hook. I don't know if they had any cameras that were ticketing rolling right turns. What happened was month after month after month, the city was in arrears to the red light camera company. And at some point, the red light camera company convinced them to put in a couple of cameras that were going to ticket a lot of people for rolling right turns. This apparently impacts revenue in a significant way because another city did the opposite. West Hollywood's red light camera program focused solely on drivers going straight through the intersection, which if you know West Hollywood, it's actually pretty remarkable. After the city adjusted stoplights to make them safer and stopped ticketing rolling right turns, some cameras only wrote three tickets per week. By 2020, 
The city chose not to renew their camera contract. There are people that make a rolling right turn in a dangerous manner, almost hit me when I was crossing the street. Those people, I don't have a problem with those people getting ticketed, quite frankly. It's the person getting that ticket at $500 at 2 o'clock in the morning when no one's around, or even the middle of the day when no one's around. That's not an appropriate punishment for what they did. We looked at every accident at all 32 red light camera intersections for six months before the cameras were installed and six months after. 20 of the 32 intersections show accidents up. This is the news report that got Jay Bieber interested in red light cameras to begin with. There's a whole bunch of controversy about whether that report was accurate and the police said it wasn't accurate. They can't both be telling the truth. So Jay spent his winter of 2010 digging through Google Scholar, finding engineering reports, some of the same ones we've looked at in the last two videos. The research convinced him the way Los Angeles and many cities use cameras is flawed. So with his concerns in hand, Jay did what any of us in a democracy would do. He took him downtown to City Hall. Savvier council members saw public opinion rapidly souring. I was talking to their staff members and they, there was a lot of stuff they didn't know, um, a lot of stuff their, their bosses and city council members didn't know. It sounds like he showed up at just the right time. Over 60,000 red light camera tickets were sitting there, unpaid. Judges had ruled that the violation alone only proves that the car was running the red light. So if somebody ignores a red light camera ticket, the city can't legally report them to a credit bureau. The DMV can't ding their license with points until after they've confessed. So why pay the ticket? That's a confession. Ending a red light camera program would mean persuading the biggest proponents. There was some pushback from the police department and from the um, engineering department in the city. The Los Angeles Police Department have a civilian oversight commission, regular people who vote to set LAPD's internal policy. And those were the people Jay wanted to talk to. Taking the research and framing it through his West Coast libertarian lens, Jay made his own summaries, which he used to persuade members of the police commission. So I, I just don't think we can give a green light to this red light report. You know, I've, see, I've read through all the data and I have concerns about this issue with the uh, turning right, you know, on the, red, uh, on the red light. I want to be convinced that their the program's going to work. I move that the commission not approve the uh, department's report. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion is carried <clears throat> unanimously. When I was younger, I really didn't like them because I heard stories of people who just got ticketed for like unfair violations and I didn't like the idea of being ticketed when it was not like a police officer. I thought that was kind of cheating. But as I started walking and biking more, I just started thinking that, you know, it's so frustrating when you have these scary near misses. Petru hasn't even started college yet, but he's already trying to advocate to make the streets safer near where he lives. Massachusetts has a bill that would make red light cameras legal. There's a way to do it right. We all learn a lot from forcing ourselves to think the opponent's side. Petru has now seen the vulnerabilities that can kill off an old red light camera program. So how would Jay consult to create an effective and ethical new red light camera program? Number one, if there is any revenue left over at the end of the month, that it goes to some other lockbox somewhere that the city cannot touch. And therefore, that's the very first thing that you can turn to and say, you know what, we are doing this for safety. We are not doing this for revenue. That extra money is just like we don't even have it. Number two is I would do everything I possibly could to make sure that people have enough you know, light time, that they have enough information as to what they need to do to comply with the law. If you do the engineering properly, you're not gonna have a red light running problem. Number three is I would tailor the ticket price to the type of violation it is. Well, if it's a slow rolling right turn and there's nobody around, it's just a warning. One second after the yellow violation, you know, again, maybe it's a warning, maybe it's a, you know, $25 ticket or something like that. You know, you put somebody in danger, depending on how much you put them in danger, um, you know, maybe it's, it's a little bit more expensive. And I think that would go a long way to show them that you're really serious about safety and you're not really doing it for revenue. We frame this as a red light camera fight, but opponents and proponents really are on the same team, using public tools to make public roadways safer for everybody. I get the impression that Jay's crusade against red light cameras in LA is not red light Robin Hood's anarchy. 
In fact, it's quite the opposite. When you engender distrust between the public and the police, between the public and elected officials, between the public and the courts, it breaks down society. You don't want to give people the idea that you're out there to make money on them. And we lose faith in our institutions. And, and we need government, we need our institutions, and we need people to have trust. The, the government, their elected officials are out there trying to help them, not trying to make money. To learn more how red light cameras work and how to fix dangerous stoplights, check out May and June's red light camera videos. But there's a lot more than red light cameras. Coming soon. This walkway is not great. <laughs> you think you're in an earthquake? People keep changing gears and going Burr! They spent even more money building this, a park over I-70. I don't work for the city. 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 You help pay for these videos, so I think it's only fair you help me pick which order I prioritize making the next ones. Contributors of any amount can vote now at patreon.com slash roadguyrob. Polls are open for 72 hours after this video posts. As always, thank you.